Florida State is not the only team struggling with quarterback play, and quarterback recruiting is a big reason why. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith, longtime college football writer and recruiting analyst. Thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel as new customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, today we've got a guest coming on, Peter Bartel. Um, Peter, thank you for uh, showing up today. We're going to talk oh. Knowles and their quarterback struggles. Obviously, they are immense, but it, I wanted to give comparison today to several other prominent historical college football programs that they're not just struggling. They stink at quarterback. And it always starts with recruiting. I say it all the time on my show, winning and losing is 80% recruiting. The stuff that happened before you put on the uniform and these schools aren't doing well. So we're going to talk about Florida state, going to talk about Florida, going to talk about Oklahoma and Michigan. All four of those schools, as we discussed before the show, they should not (laughs) be where they are right now. Yeah. And I'm being very kind. So, uh, you did a pod on your own pod about Florida State. I want to give you, before I go into Florida State stats, and they are pretty rough, your 20 seconds of what fame, whatever you want to give, however long, on Norvell, however you want to discuss it with Florida State and your thoughts. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, Norvell needs to fire himself. Long story short, um, he needs to have some dignity, some pride, and realize you're you're catapulting a program only further into the ground. I mean, I know you've talked about it. Like, it's not going to get better. Uh, what are you doing? Like, it's one thing to be mediocre, six and six, that kind of thing. You're not even mediocre. You're one and nine, and you're losing to teams like you should not be losing. You need to have some dignity and respect for that program. This isn't like I'm a Syracuse fan. This is not Syracuse. I'm going to pick up my own team. This is Florida State. Right. Like there is expectations and standards that you need to uphold buyouts and salaries aside. That's just crazy. Yeah, I I know that the contract is the biggest issue, and I'm sure you're aware of it to a certain degree. But the last I saw, and I don't know the total to the day or anything, right. his buyout was sixty three point eight million. That's problem. Yeah. That's problem. The president or the trustees, the athletic director, et cetera, all signed off on that after they went 13 and 0. And then I know they got blasted in the bowl game, but like they had a great year last year, but sometimes things go sideways. And that leads into the point I brought out at the top. When you miss a quarterback, not one year, not two, but three years in a row in recruiting. Yeah. Right off the cliff. They got lucky last year, honestly, because Jordan Travis returned for a six year. If he had turned pro. Yeah. Four, like true. They'd been seven and five or something. They had a really good roster, but like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like he he won games yeah. at that spot. So just to give people a perspective here, 2020, 2021, and 22, they signed Chubba Purdy in 2020, ended up at Nebraska. He's never played, never did anything. I thought he was overrated out of high school. He was a lower four-star guy. They didn't sign a guy in 2021. And then A.J. Duffy in 2022, who wasn't a fit. He's a pure pocket guy. I don't know why they signed him. He was a bust. So they missed three years in a row. Now, the last two, they got Brock Glenn, and then they obviously got Luke Cromenhawk now. Those are the two young guys. But playing young players doesn't work very often at the quarterback spot. I remember Caleb Williams was, in my opinion, the best high school player coming out. Goes to Oklahoma, the perfect system. Once teams got a little film of him his freshman year, like I remember them playing Kansas, he got annihilated in that game. Right. Kansas doesn't have the same dudes that Oklahoma does. They're just well-coached in general but he had like 50 yards passing or something like that at, in a halftime. So that shows you playing young guys too early, which is exactly what the Knowles are doing right now. Brock Glenn and Luke Cromanock have zero business being the starting line. They just don't have anybody else. So I'm just curious, you, you obviously follow ACC, SEC football. What When you've seen Florida State this year, watching the quarterbacks, were you surprised at how bad it was? And did you know 
they're de- I mean, DJ was obviously a fifth year senior transfer from Oregon State. Yeah. But did you know how bad it was? And no. were you shocked? Yeah, no idea. And um, I know it's just like off season training camp and everybody's positive, but you know, they do the whole road show with the ACC network and they, sure. they go to Florida state, like every school every year. And the vibes always seem to be positive when Jordan Travis was there and beyond. And the other thing too, Brian is the, the number two, not Croman Hout, the other guy. Brooklyn. Thank you. Duh. He'd been under Travis for even longer than, you know, Croman Hout had like, well, Croman Hout's a true freshman, right? Yeah. So, so Brock is a red shirt was freshman. Under him. He, he started that game against Louisville in the ACC top. Now, he wasn't very good. Yeah. Yeah. But at least he'd played it. He's been through the year. So, this is his second year. You start to see things usually in a second year, but getting right. thrown into the mix in the middle of the season's iffy because he didn't get any of the reps really in fall camp yeah. with the number one. So, that's a killer. Right. But he's got four touchdowns. And five intercepts. Matter of fact, like here, here are a couple of the stats for Florida State. This is insane. As an offense, not just passing, they don't have a game in which they've totaled 300 yards of offense. That's almost impossible to do. They also do not have anything consistent at all, touchdown to interceptions, because they have eight touchdown passes for the season and 13 picks. Uh, it's ridiculous. 13.3 points per game. I believe it's still dead last in the country. They are averaging 5.9 yards per attempt as a team. That includes a fifth-year senior in that equation. I know DJ wasn't great, but he still chucked it down the field some. And here is arguably the worst stat. The moneymaker play in college football, pro football, any level, is third down. Here are the Knowles on third down as a passing unit. 37 of 86, 43%, 438 yards, three touchdowns, and seven interceptions. They've only gotten 20 first downs out of 86 passing attempts on third down. I mean, those are just like off the charts atrocious. Yeah. Like you're, we're not even in the stratosphere of mediocre. So yep. your point and it's why I asked you, did you know anything besides DJ? And you said, no, that's 90% of the people, but that's why I do the recruiting Intel. I'm like, this ain't going to go well, but they need to change. I remember saying, telling people, cause like, Oh, we need to, Rocky, and he'll be better. I'm like, eh, better, no. But you've got to do it because you got to go through a year of crap. Yeah, you you you're right, and I think it it makes sense. Like you you missed a couple times. You did not recruit in a QB in one of the years. And the other thing that does not do is give those guys in seat like Brock Glenn motivation to get better, to take it serious in practice, to take it serious in the off season. Now Glenn gets to look at that and says, huh. I'm like it after Jordan Travis. So what, what do I need to do, you know, to really improve? I'm going to get on the field. Yeah. They brought in DJ and I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, everybody knew he was going to be the guy, but that's the danger of quarterback. You always have to, in my opinion, you always have to treat it like you're going to be the guy in the next game, even if you're not the starter, because when somebody gets banged up, DJ broke a bone in his hand or whatever, whenever that happens and you're not prepared, there's no position that you look, really bad and are more exposed than quarterback in all a sport. And but that's again, the thing is even with DJ, like he knew who's after, like there's no like driving factor to know, like he probably knew going into the year, even before they got DJ, he wasn't going to be the guy for 2024, but he was still going to be the guy in 2025 and beyond. So obviously Glenn has sat there and just said, I'm not really going to, commit is hard because I don't have pressure behind me, right? Like you look at Auburn right now, they have a line of QBs. They have like competition with Walker White and Hank Brown and stuff. At least they have that. They're not producing, but at least they have that. Brock Glenn's got nobody, you know, to look at and say, I, I need to compete. So. I don't know what the deal is. He seems like a good kid, but if he's putting all of it, into what's going on. I think his touchdown to interception ratio is four to five. And he just looks lost at times. Yeah. His ability to read the pocket, like against Notre Dame, they were overwhelmed up front. And I'm being extremely kind. Like Notre Dame's got several NFL players on their D, but that was a jailbreak. And he, he acted surprised sometimes when he was in the pocket. It's like, he's still not developing as fast as I would like. And maybe that's one of the reasons the offense coordinator just got canned. I know he doesn't call the plays as Norvell technically does for the Knowles, but 
Like they just look completely ill-equipped. That's what you get when you miss on recruiting. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this is on you guys. So and it doesn't doesn't help too. Like you've pointed it out before on both sides of the ball. The team has just quit. It's obvious they've quit. Oh yeah. There's there are so, players in the first quarter when Notre Dame was going down the head wall. Notre Dame scored on that first drive. There there were plays where it was loafs for five, six plays into the game. Right. On defense. I'm like, oh come <laughs> on. So now the the energy because they know the offense isn't going to score again. Everything, whether you want it to or not, is centered around quarterback play. Yeah, and that's that's really yeah. rough. Right. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about the competition. Some of the teams that Florida State recruits against, they've proven some of this to be a problem as well because their recruiting misses are causing them problems. That's next here on Locked On Sibbles. Nothing delivers comfort and joy quite like the unrivaled quality and taste of Omaha Steaks. This year, skip the holiday hustle and bustle and save 50% off gourmet gifts site-wide at omahasteaks.com. Plus, get a $30 reward card when you shop early and score an extra $30 off with promo code COLLEGE. With five generations of experience, they consistently deliver the world's best steak experience, and the gifting experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easier to deliver the perfect gift with thoughtful, curated gift packages starting at $89. From legendary steaks to mouth-watering desserts and more, save 50% site-wide at omahasteaks.com. Plus, our listeners get an extra $30 off of pr promo code COLLEGE and $30 reward card when you shop early. That's 50% off at omahasteaks.com and an extra $30 off promo code COLLEGE. Minimum purchase may apply. All right, another team that should not struggle is one that Florida State fans hate, and that's Florida. Their situation is a great example of why you need consistent recruiting. Florida, I mean, they had the Spurrier era and all that. I don't know how old you are, Peter, but like when I was first getting into college football, right after that, they hired Spurrier about yeah. five years later. Florida had never been a really great program, ever. They never were. But then Spurrier got there, and that changed like overnight. There's no excuse with their talent being in central part of the state. They're two hours from Tampa. They're an hour and 50 minutes from Orlando. They got the entire West coast of Florida and East coast right there at their disposal. Why do they suck at quarterback? 2020 to 2022. I was like going through some of the stats and trying to remember. So I just pulled it off and I started looking. Here's the weird part. They got lucky. Anthony Richardson is from Gainesville. Literally. He went to East side high. Mm -hmm. So they get the free four-star kid right from their backyard. But then yeah. after that, they get Carlos Del Rio in 21, knew the kid. He was a bit bit flaky, ended up being a bust, ended up playing for your Syracuse. He didn't do very much. 2022, they get Max Brown. They brought in a transfer quarterback, Max, Max Bolts. They didn't get anybody in 23. They get Now they get DJ Lagway this year. It's just been all over the map with recruiting. If they yeah. hadn't had a transfer quarterback, now I know he's hurt right now. Florida might be in the same situation that Florida State is. And they got lucky that DJ picked it up quicker. At least yeah, he could throw the deep true. ball. Like, but DJ is an exception to the rule. And I, I'd seen him play live. Like DJ Lagway is 6'3, 230. Like he's uh -huh. he looks like an NFL player right now. Yeah. Have you seen them play? And in your opinion, just like what is it you think causes a program like Florida? I know they're a run first team. Napier wants to do that. But why are they so bad at recruiting it? And they haven't developed anybody either. What yeah. do you think the deal is? They're stuck in mud, right? And I think it's like, it's not just Florida, but a lot of these teams are turning coaches too quickly. Um, and mm -hmm. even like, even if, knock on wood, uh, Florida Gibbs Napier five or six years you can't necessarily say it's all his fault because they went from McIlwain to Mullen and they're like oh he's not it he's not it he's not it right and Mullen had some decent seasons and they just move on McIlwain too like they move on and that adds up though right like to the next coach and that's what I mean Freeze is essentially blam blaming Brian Harson at Auburn for the same thing right um, it is it is a ripple effect in Florida. It's a more sustained ripple effect. And also they do have the 
uh, it was John Kittner's son. I forget his first name. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He played there a little bit. Yeah, and, and, but then he had some off-the-field stuff, so that that matters. Um, the first QB, just to kind of go back to it, is Danny Warfel that I remember. Um, oh, man, he was awesome. Florida. Yeah, and then you're right. They they really arrived, arrived again under Urban, and uh, it's just been hard. I do see Lagway. I think out of the – so, like, we're going to talk about some other teams like Oklahoma and Michigan. Out of those four, I see Florida as – one of the better situations right now. I say that though, and I don't see Napier being more than an eight and four coach. At That's kind of where I'm at too. Okay. Yeah. And it's sad, right? Cause I do think to your point, Lagway is a difference maker. He is it. He is him, but he's him on Florida. And that's the issue to your point. Like where's everything else around him? Billy Napier is not going to get it to 10 and two, 11 and one. And then you're sitting there like, Okay, cool. Like next year, they probably will do better. Presuming Lagway comes back healthy, they've already announced Napier is back. What they're going to go like? I predict seven and five. This very early, obviously, but seven and five. You can't fire Napier off that. So you give him another year, and then he's eight and four, and then Lagway leaves maybe, and then you're back down. Like that's almost exactly what I was going to say because they're recruiting well enough to hang around in any game. Yeah, but it used to be they could bring their B game and, you know, go through a sleepy Saturday noon start against Mississippi state. Yes. But in the middle of the third quarter, their star corner picks off a pass and houses it. They That's just right. want with talent. Yep. They don't have quite the talent they used to. And I mean, not like they have nowhere near what they did when urban was in town. So it's a different animal. And I think it just shows you that even though Ford is an easy sell, in my opinion, the Florida job as a head coach is a top five job in America. I think that's really easy. They've screwed it up that bad. They missed multiple recruiting classes. They got lucky on a transfer, although he's hurt. And they don't have anybody. You know, Graham Mertz is a good player, and he probably helped DJ. But DJ shouldn't be playing right now. Freshman quarterbacks that's are true. never the yeah. answer. Yeah. Right. And if, right. They're just not. That's the same thing over and over and over again. So see, I'm just curious, like, how can you not understand that as a staff, like, Every yeah. one of these staffs, it's the same thing. They just missed on obvious court. And how hard is it to get kids to go to UF? I mean, right. seriously, bro, it's just not. Right. So it, that's a very easy sell to me. Um, I, I want to transition real quick to Michigan. Speaking of what this one blows my mind the most. Harbaugh was a great player at Michigan. He was a Heisman finalist when he played. First round draft pick. He's a guy that's been a very successful coach. No program over the last five years has done a poorer job of the traditionally elite programs of recruiting quarterback than the Michigan Wolverines. This stop here is grotesque. Um, and I thought Florida State was the worst. Michigan's even worse than them. They signed a guy in 2020, Dan Villari. Yeah, Syracuse. Well, he's at Syracuse now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, yep. and how much is Dan playing, Peter? How right. Much? As a tight end. I think Michigan had him as a QB too, right? Yeah. 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 So we they converted him to tight end. <laughs> they got JJ McCarthy the next year. He plays some as a freshman, wins the job as a sophomore, his yeah. junior year, they win it. But he turned pro. The mm-hmm. years before and after, obviously Dan wasn't wasn't it. 2022, they got Jaden Denegal. I don't know who that is. And they got the Alex Orgy kid. Yeah. Orgy shouldn't be playing quarterback. I don't think Denegal's either on the roster. If he is, he's not playing quarterback. And then they got a kid in 2023 named Kendrick Bell, who's now playing wide receiver. How did you miss that bad at Michigan? I know. And Deacon Hill um, from Iowa last year, he transferred to like a D2 Utah Tech or something. That's who Orgy reminds me of. Like oh, Orgy is the Deacon Hill that did not transfer. It should have position changed or something. Um, and I thought he'd be better, you know, but um, yeah, you're right. Like you're missing and now you're relying on Dave Portnoy to pony up all this money and supposedly $10 million to insert an emergency to your point, true freshman QB and Bryce Underwood, maybe. They're not going to get him either. So for what I'm hearing, I mean, I give Bryce credit if that's what he does. Cause like it wouldn't be in his best interest to be a true freshman at Michigan and to be like thrust in. And he would probably be the starter before the end of spring. Well, who's, like, the, one, no 
they have a four star freshman right now there that hasn't played yet, but he was a he's in C. Um, I forget and I've heard his, his parents is. don't want him playing, and that's kind of part of what's going on right now because well, they're so, I get that. They're mad. Yeah, I get that. Freshman. I don't have a problem with. Let me see who it is. Michigan. I mean. It's a hard place because that fan base is bonkers. So I don't have a problem with that. Their quarterback commitment in the current class is Jaden Davis. I know I've met yeah. him. I've seen Thank him. You. I didn't think he was very good. I thought he was overrated because he just he has a very unusual throwing motion, but he's a great athlete. He, he's mm -hmm. from Providence Day in Charlotte, but he's not ready. Right. So maybe he's just going to redshirt it and leave it out. But him not playing at all this year. Gives yeah. me pause too, because you can play four games and still redshirt. I did. It was the I think it was Craig Sheeman on Lockdown Big Ten, and he had a theory that maybe he's not playing because the family knows Michigan's awful this year, right? So doesn't want to ruin his confidence, etc. And could there's be. maybe a political dynamic going on between the parents and Sharon Moore. And I'll say this too: I feel for Sharon, right? I really do think he's just a villain. Um, and I I kind of compare a lot to Zach Arnett at Mississippi state. And I, I hate that Leach passed when he did and that he passed, but it kind of reminds me a little bit of that, like exit coach for different reasons. But then it's like, Hey, Sharon, you're in seat, you're a player's coach and the players like you. And it's a security thing. And he just, I hate it for Sharon too. Cause clearly he worked his way up. He was good as an online coach. He, moved his way in at offensive coordinator, but like, he, dude, and then you thrust this guy to his first head coaching job. Is that the yeah, University that of Michigan? We That's saw what tough. Pickle did as an interim years ago at Ohio State, right? Seven and six. Same thing. Arnett, that well, Mississippi State, and don't get me started. You hire a defensive-minded coordinator for an offensive-minded team. Like, well, I get the continuity, yeah, but what that, are you doing? That was bad. Like, that was really but there's bad. just situations I'm saying, like, this is big-time gigs for coaches that are just thrust into it. And I think that's part of it with Michigan. Like that's a, I think Sharon Moore may do great at like a group of five initially. Right. It but, could have been, you know, it's different coaching at some place like Tulsa as yeah. compared to Michigan. It, it, it's a massive one too. So when we come back, there's one more team uh, speaking of the state of Oklahoma that we're going to talk about that is next here on locked on Seminoles. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, you live play-by-play -play, all in the same place, and much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right. Um, the only team that I've seen live this year that was maybe worse than Florida State it was debatable, but they – they fixed it at the end of the game. That was Oklahoma. I saw the Oklahoma Auburn game. My brain will yeah. never get that out. It was one of the worst games I've seen. <laughs> and Oklahoma's, they got it. Here's the deal. Venables, first time head coach, but got a ton of experience. He comes into a situation that's weird because Caleb actually signed with Oklahoma, if you remember. Then he transferred after his freshman year. So they got kind of an awkward spot, but still, this just shows you how important recruiting is because they haven't done anything good with recruiting since then. The 22 class had, this is a hilarious name, a JC kid named General Booty. Yeah. No idea who that is. Yeah. Um, they got Jackson Arnold last year. He played some. Everybody thought he was the heir apparent. Dylan Gabriel was there was good. And they every, all the rumors were Jackson was going to beat him out. So yeah. Yeah. look what happened there. Be careful what you ask for when you get rid of the experienced quarterback. Dylan yeah. Gabriel might get a ring at Oregon. Politics Obviously, Oklahoma wrong. didn't. Handled that one very well. Yeah. And then they also got Michael Hawkins this year, plus another kid. Yeah. I know he's not ready because he got benched, but Jackson Arnold was awful. And they're in a scenario where they have Michael Hawkins come in, a true freshman from the greater Dallas area, 
He can't read a defense. So you're after having Caleb Williams a few years later, you're to a true freshman that beat out a redshirt freshman. It's the same deal that Florida State's in. How does this happen at Oklahoma? I know Caleb left. That was kind of weird. Yeah. But why did right. you get rid of Dylan Gabriel, A, and B? Yeah. What what are you doing with your other quarterback recruiting? Because, I mean, they must have misread spring ball something terrible yeah, you, for this to you, happen. You put it into a really interesting context that I didn't think about. Kayla Williams to this. That's wild. At I least mean, Florida had board, for a while. Right. Yeah, I thought Caleb were, was the number one recruit in the country coming out. Like he was the guy. Yeah, well, he was amazing. I mean, he took over that uh, Red River as a freshman. Yeah, I remember. Took it over. Um, but I think with them, like you have to keep in mind, Venables is a defensive minded head coach. He was a phenomenal DC at Clemson and then OU yeah. before that, which is the tie. Um, I think something he's struggling with right now is exactly that, Brian, not putting enough attention to offense or just assuming that, oh, Arnold's a high recruit. It's going to be fine, right? No, it's not fine. Um, and I think – but I, I'm team Venables. I'll state that. Um, I think OU in general, they knew they were uh, – I think they knew they were going to the SEC when they made the Venables hire, obviously. Um and they knew they needed a defensive-minded coach to compete in the SEC. That's the approach that they took. So I credit it. Um, the thing that he, I also give him credit for, is he just let Seth Luttrell, their OC, go. First year OC, because you just hired him, right? He had the guts to let him go he in did. year one. Not a lot of coaches would have enough to swallow their pride. Look at Mark Norvell, Florida State. It's everybody Just else. Just the opposite. Problem, right? Just the opposite. So um, the, good on him for that, for realizing, shoot, I need to fix this. Because you're right. It's the product on the offensive side especially is not good. It was so bad against Tennessee. Heupel just knew if he dinked and dunked and ran the ball, Billy Bowman and Danny Stutzman in that defense was the only way Tennessee could lose that game. He knew Jackson Arnold, to your point, had nothing. Hawkins had nothing on offense. He looked awful in that so, game. I tried to watch some of that. That was hard. I think one thing, and I'll compare this to a Muschamp at Florida. We were talking Florida. Muschamp recently came out and said, remember when he was head coach, Florida had some awesome defenses. Because of those defenses, to your point, they could still roll out post-Urban in some of those games and show out, even with mediocre quarterback play. But Muschamp came out and said, if he could have just gotten the offense right, they would have been fine. And I fully agree with that. Well, their defense was already defense legit, was knocked but- out. Yeah. You know, now it's solid at times, but they got games where they're just completely getting busted too. Like the Texas game was a, just a joke. Right. And so he's trying to fix it. I'm still team Venables. I think he will give it an A plus for effort and realizing like, okay, shoot, I just hired Seth Luttrell year one, but good on him. He let him go. The offense does I look agree. improved ish um, right now since they made that move. So we'll see who he brings in, et cetera. But I think out of those four teams we mentioned, Michigan, Florida, Florida State, and Venables, I'm Florida and OU I'm most high on. And Venables, too, to his credit, um, Hugh Freeze has beaten Saban twice, right, as head coach at Ole Miss. Venables did it as a D.C. at Clemson uh, when they won two national championships. He was the D.C. on that staff. So, yeah, not a head coach. I understand that. That's all Dabo. But um, I just – I'm still team Venables. <laughs> I'm giving, you well, know. I, I think your point about I'd forgotten that he had fired his coordinator. Florida State made the move, and I thought they were going to be behind Florida. But Oklahoma did that so early. Yes. That it wasn't even ahead of the curve. It was just like universe changing. Yeah. But also, I remember talking to some buddies for the season. We we're like, I'm not sure about this hire. Now, I didn't think it'd go as bad as it did. Yeah, Don't I agree. Wrong, but yeah. I was on the field for the Oklahoma Auburn game. That offense, they ran the ball, quarterback ran around, and they hit a couple of big passing plays. That was it. Okay. That was it. They're, they're, they are garbage in the passing game. Oklahoma, as a matter of fact, their passing stats are, are just so bad. Like Michael Hawkins this year, he's played six games, but he's only 48 to 77. If you're going to start a kid, why would you only let him throw it 77 times? Like, He's not getting any chance to get in a rhythm at all. So 
It's really sad. Um, they haven't averaged six yards per pass attempt this year, Oklahoma, except for two games. One right. was against Maine. That doesn't count. And then they hit again, they hit two big passing plays against Auburn and they averaged 10.7. It's hilarious. Auburn just they find a way to choke. But Brian, I think with OU, we we should have known. Uh, and you may have, I did not. I was fooled. I think Bandul had them seven and a half win loss total preseason. I thought they crushed that, but I should have known because all their fans were touting was this offensive line coach, Bill Biedenbaugh, who's been That's there really forever. Cool. Not touting their OC, Seth Luttrell, because I agree. That was a very questionable hire, and they're not touting their head coach and their, you know, like, and, and this is all with as well a lot of changes on that offensive line that Caden they didn't go well. Forget his last name transfers out to Mizzou. Right. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Like in your, Oh, it's okay. We have a great O-line coach. I think beating ball is phenomenal. The NFL talent proved that, but like he's an O-line coach. Like, if you're position. relying on that, that should, you know, that tells you all you need to know. Well, to, to wrap up here today, folks, the gist of this is still the same. I wanted to compare some other teams to Florida State. When you miss a, a quarterback in multiple years, it's almost inevitable it is going to come back to haunt you. Even Florida, they went out and got a quarterback that did good, but he got hurt. It's kind of their come up against. You should not miss it, Florida, Florida State, and quarterback recruiting. Jordan Travis kind of bailed Florida State out for a while. Now he's not there. When you miss a quarterback, it's bad news bears. Um, right now I'm hoping Florida State gets Carter Smith. I did a pod about that. Yesterday, um, to replace Tramel Jones, it just decommitted. He's probably going to end up in Florida. But anyway, uh, Peter, stick with me. Thank you very much. You can find him at Pigskin Petey uh, on X. You can find me at FB Scout underscore Florida. Everybody have a good one. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care.